welcome back to my channel my name is danielle and i'm the owner and creator of the eighth salt it is my handmade small business where i make scrunchies and keychains i also sell hair claws and makeup hair clips and hair accessory type products in today's video i'll be giving you guys a how-to tutorial on how to make your own diy sewing labels at home it is a very beginner friendly process and you will have most of the items and materials that you need to make the sewing labels already at home there are one or two items that you will need to source on top of that however they are readily available in shops and online this is an example of a scrunchie with a sewing label in that i made previously this scrunchie is one of the first ones that I made for my business and one that I've just kept. I don't actually use this one, I just kept a few of them. So that is what the tag looks like and what we will be demonstrating today. So it is a double sided tag that you can see in there. So either way the tag is flipped, your logo will still be showing. And it is one that we just sewed into the seam there. We will be making the star logo like this. This is a satin version. We will be making the cotton version of the sewing label. So these are double sided labels where you fold them in half like this and then sew them in so that way there are two sides to the logo this method is very budget friendly and very cost effective particularly for beginners and startup businesses there is only one part of the process that is a little time consuming which is setting up the file with your logo on them that you need to print However, once you set that up right at the beginning, you can just reuse that file and print multiple copies of it and you'll be good to go. This particular method that we will be doing today is a method that I personally used when I was making my own sewing labels. I made a lot of sewing labels right at the beginning of my business and used this method every time and it worked really well for me and was a method that I stuck with. When I first started, I wanted to reduce my costs as much as I can, and this was one of the ways I could do that. I will show you some other ways to reduce costs as well with this process, as there are a few cheaper variations with the items you can get. However, they will take a bit more time. However, without further ado, let's get into it. These are all the tools and materials that you will need for this process. The majority of them you will already have and then these two are the ones that you will need to source this is what the transfer paper looks like it has two sides so a rough side which is the side that we print on and then a smooth side which is the backing that gets peeled off and is indicated by a red line here most transfer paper will have some sort of marking or indication to show which is the back and then a clean unmarked side to show the front. There are two types of transfer paper, one that is laser printer compatible and one that are inkjet compatible. You will need to make sure to source the right type of transfer paper that is compatible for your printer because if you have the wrong paper, there is a possibility that it will melt inside your printer if that particular transfer paper can't withstand the heat of your printer so that is one thing that you will need to look out for however this particular transfer paper is for laser printing which is compatible with my laser printer you will also need some sort of material this is called bias binding and what we will be using today and what i used to use as well this particular one is a cotton polyester blend I suggest using a pure cotton, 100% cotton bias binding. That is my tip for you as it will give you a better result and a better looking label as well. This is the one that I have today. There's a 50 meter roll on it. You can purchase this online either in bulk like this or in smaller meterage, it's up to you. I got this particular one online. However, I bought the majority of my bias binding 
from Spotlight and I used pure 100% cotton. This was labeled online as 100% cotton, however, it's actually not. It's a polyester cotton blend, which is why I haven't used it yet. Today we'll be using this as that is what I have available. The other tools that we will need to use for this process will be an iron. I will be using just a regular clothing iron for this tutorial today and it's what I use for my own sewing labels. However, a heat press or a mini handheld heat press will work as well. Anything will work for this process. However, as long as we are able to adjust the temperature settings on it so we can get the right settings for the transfer paper and for the material that we will be using. And of course, we will also need an ironing board, anything to protect the surface that we will be ironing on. Then we will need some cutting tools. And of course, we will need a computer to set up our file with our logo on them. That will be the longest process or the longest task in this process. However, you only need to set up that file once and it will be ready to go whenever you need to make your sewing labels next. And then we of course need a printer as well, which is over there and we will get to in a second. However, first up, we need to set up our file and I'll be showing you guys how to do that. So let's get into it. We will be creating a file like this with our logo on there. As you can see, they are flipped back and front. I have created mine in Adobe InDesign. I have a full subscription to Adobe Creative Cloud and have access to all of their programs. That is what I have used to design and lay out my own file. However, I know most people won't have access to this software. So for the purposes of this tutorial, we will be using Word we will be able to achieve the same effect using word it will just take a little longer and there'll be a few more tweaks however this will be more accessible to a lot more people so first up you will want to grab your logo and then paste it into the document and as you can see we've got our logo for both sides so this will be the front side that will be the back side and then what you want to do is copy that and then paste it right next to your other logo and then repeat that process until we get a full line across. And then this Word document only allows us to print six across. So then we will keep on pasting our document until we've filled out the whole A4 sheet. So essentially you want to keep on pasting your logo until you end up with all of them laid out like this. One thing to note that you will need to do as well is to make sure to leave space in between your logos. So this is one logo, this is another, so on so forth. So you will need to leave some space here to allow you to fold them in the middle and then give you some room, some fabric space to sew and have a seam along there as well. So this is what mine looks like. I'll zoom in a bit more for you. I filled up a whole page and got a strip along here as well, just to maximize the amount of transfer paper that we will be using. We are using two centimeter bias binding. So I have made sure that my logo fits the two centimeters. So whatever size bias binding you are using, you will need to adjust your logo to fit that size. So now that we have our file with our logos laid out, we are able to print this now. Let's head to the printer and load in our transfer paper. I'll show you guys how to do that and the best settings for it as well. This is my printer. It is a laser printer. It has two feed trays, a tray down here for regular A4 paper and it fits a whole ring. And then it has a side feeder tray here, which is what we will be using for specialty paper, such as the transfer paper. For my particular printer, we load the paper upside down. Now we are able to print our file. So for that, just file print, select the right printer. And here we will need to reverse our page. So essentially we need to turn this backwards. And to do that, it is just a simple option in your print settings 
to reverse it for you which will flip your image the wrong way which is exactly what we want then we just need to hit print so that is all printed now that is what it will look like so as you can see it is reversed essentially it has printed backwards which is exactly what we want let's take this to the ironing board and start ironing it on to our bias binding now that we've got our transfer paper all printed with our logo on there it's a bit difficult the light is kind of shining off the surface of the transfer paper because it is a kind of waxy surface so it does catch the light but once we have that all printed we then just need to cut it out into strips and then i just get my strips like this which is the perfect size to iron onto our bias binding tape. Once you have all your strips cut out, we can then head to the ironing board. I have just gotten my iron plugged in and heated up. In terms of the settings, you will want to follow the settings on and the instructions on your transfer paper. That will give you the exact settings that you need to set your iron to to transfer onto their particular paper. My instructions for this laser transfer paper says to have my iron set on the linen setting. However, my iron does not have those types of settings. If you can see there, it's just a min max dial. So I have set mine right in the middle, which should be good for our purpose. But while that is still heating up, we will need to get our bias binding. And then essentially we want to cut a strip of our bias binding to the length of our strip that we have, which will most likely just be the length of your A4 paper. So mine is about there. So I'm just going to cut this off. Now that we've got our bias binding, the first thing we want to do is make sure our fabric, our bias binding is straight. So we're just going to give that a bit of an iron. That makes it nice and straight for us and it also heats up the fabric a little bit as well which will help for the transfer. As a tip for the bias binding, there is a cheaper alternative for it as well. You can buy yourself a piece of cotton fabric from any hobby craft store which are relatively inexpensive. You can get them for a couple dollars per meter and you can create your own bias binding shape. So you'll just cut out your strips of fabric like this and then fold in the edges to create yourself a nice professional looking edge. And then you'll just need to iron them down. And that is another option for you to use instead of bias binding. It is a cheaper alternative. However, it does require a bit more time. So once we have that ironed out and flat, Essentially what we want to do is get our transfer tape and then turn that onto our bias binding. And then we just want to line it up. And then what you want to do is press your iron onto one edge just to secure that. You don't want to keep your iron in one place too long because you will burn it and you will melt the transfer tape. So you just want to apply some even pressure along the whole thing just to get it stuck on and then you can start ironing it as you would normal. So this way you keep the transfer tape in place by tacking it onto the fabric first, onto the bias binding first and then you can go back and forth with your iron without having it move. Okay, that beeping is my iron telling me that it is laying flat for too long so i've just got to tip it up like that it's just a safety feature in this particular iron so it doesn't burn anything but that's what that beeping was so that is now iron so there are two types of transfer tapes either a cold peel or a hot peel this transfer tape is a hot peel so we will be peeling it off immediately And there we go, that is your custom logo printed on the bias binding. And that is what it looks like. 
So they come out nice and clear and very professional looking. There is a close up. We just need to cut these apart now. So essentially we're gonna cut them here. So that will give us a logo where we can then fold there and then sew that into our fabric. So that's just another close up of what the logo looks like after being transferred onto the bias binding. So it comes out nice and clean and very professional looking as well. So you can achieve some professional results at home using tools that you most likely already have at home with a few additions but the quality is quite nice and it is a good way for beginner businesses who want to reduce their costs at the startup but still want to produce professional looking products this is a great tip and tool to use as they do produce very good looking and very professional looking logos and tags for your handmade garments so now we're just going to cut them apart and our logos are done just cut them in the middle there and you can just cut out as many as you need I usually make these in a very large bulk and get them um, all ready and done for when I'm sewing. That is the label. Then we just fold it in half on that seam there, give it a bit of a crease. And that is our logo. That is our sew in label. We just sew across there and we are done. So that is the raw version and that's what it looks like in my scrunchies. That is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this how-to tutorial on how to make your own DIY custom sewing labels at home. It is a very easy and very cost-effective way to up your products and to give them that professional look as i mentioned earlier this is the exact same process that i used when i first started my business and it worked really well for me keep in mind this method can be adjusted and suited to you and your style you can use any size bias binding or material and in any shape also do the garment version where it is a rectangle and you fold in the sides and stitch them below as you see on most t-shirts or crewnecks. You can also print anything that you want onto the fabric as well. You can have a full color tag. We just did black and white today because my logo is black and white. However, whatever your printer can print onto the transfer paper, you can then transfer onto the fabric. It will be awesome to see your creations that you make using these labels. So please do leave me a comment down below. So with all of that being said, that is the end of this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it beneficial in some way. Make sure to like and subscribe to my channel and to hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing when I upload my next video and I'll see you all in the next one.